All right, so we have a view, we have a serializer, we have a model. How do these things work exactly? In this one, we're gonna show you how the serializer works, at least in the shell. So in the Python shell, you can get a little bit more familiar with it. Um, so it, it, it is something that knowing this, you can use a different view than a class-based view, or you could use this data in some other form or fashion if you need it to. Um, but it's generally just a good idea to understand how all of this stuff is working. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the shell and just do python manage.py shell. Um, of course, using manage.py shell is going to go into the Django managed Python shell versus just a standard Python shell. That means that you can actually import from your Django project. In this case, we're going to do from post.models, import post. And we give us some space here so we can see what's going on. And then from posts.api.serializers, import post serializer. And we want to do serializers, not just serializer. There we go. So now we have our model imported. So of course, we can get an object, any sort of object of the post model by doing post.objects dot all and then we could do some sort of filter or I could just say dot first uh, even quicker you can get rid of the dot all and just do dot first and if we go to if we just print out the object we will see that it's giving us the unicode if I just type out the object it gives us the post instance um, which is the another item here we can also do object dot ID we can do all of those types of things um, as we see fit. So in this case, that is our model, right? It's, it is what it is. And if we did object.title, we can do all that dot notation stuff and get what it is. But since we have this post serializer, we can actually serialize this data and see what it looks like serialized. And that's really simple. So we'll just say object data equals to, and it's going to be post serializer of the object itself. So we're passing the actual instance of the post model itself. Press enter, we do object obj underscore data dot data, and this will give us the serialized data. Um, so it gives us all of the things that are related to the serializer itself. And of course, if you your content was a lot longer, this would also be a lot longer. Um, but notice it's giving Unicode data, it's giving us our date time, it's giving us our ID, all sorts of things in here, which is pretty cool. Um, so if you use the dictionary, if you wanted to get content from that, this is actually how you would go about doing it. So it still works as a Python dictionary, so you can still treat it as such, although it is JSON data. Um, okay, so now that we've got this, that's a way to serialize data, but how do we actually create data with the serializer? Well, for this one, I'm actually going to use data that I've already written out so we can work with that itself. And I'm gonna go in the serializer and just put under here, we're just gonna put a quick note here. So this is the data that I'm gonna go off of, right? I'm gonna copy this data and bring it into our terminal. Of course, you could write out all this data, um, but just to save a little time, I just wanted to show you this. Notice that there's only title, content, and publish. It's missing slug, right? It's actually missing slug, but it is raw data. It's not a actual model itself. It's not an instance of anything. It's just a dictionary full of data. So I'm gonna say new item equals to post serializer data equals to data right so data is the actual argument or keyword argument you'd use data itself is related to this right here so if you called this data 5 or abc or whatever you could actually use that same variable there of course so if i press enter and do new date new item dot data it will say hey you should call is valid first or get the initial data. So we can actually do initial data. And what we see here is this is the data that's being sent to it, right? Um, which is cool. So it did serialize it in a, in a way because um, what would happen then is if there was an error, we could actually send back this initial data saying this is all that you gave us, give us uh, better content essentially. Um, so now that we have this is valid call, let's actually go back into our data here and I'm going to say new item is equal to post serializer data equals to data. And then we'll say if new item that is underscore valid, 
then we'll say new item dot save else we will say print out new item dot errors okay so this is this looks this should look a little familiar um, let's go ahead and look at a view and we see if form is valid you know form save all that stuff so it does or it should definitely look a little familiar to you in relation to regular Django. And that's why the Django REST framework is so good is because it's actually going off of how Django itself works. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this and we're gonna paste it into our terminal here. And what we get is we printed out an error. It says slug, this field is required. Um, so contrary to what we did in our view, um, if we didn't actually pass the slug, and we also don't have our instance user and stuff like that. But if we didn't pass a slug on our model form, which we didn't, um, it doesn't raise that error, right? Um, we could also get rid of that in our serializer. So if we got rid of that, it would do it, but we'd have to go back in the shell. Instead, let's actually just fix our data to actually have a slug. So we'll do slug and we'll put it equals to, yeah, buddy. And there we go. I'm gonna copy all this all over again, paste it in our terminal. And what we see is post, yeah, buddy. And if I do new item dot data, I see the data that came out. And I can also do new item dot ID. Ah, no, you can't because new item is not an object itself, um, but rather it is a post serialized object. So new item dot data is really um, the only way you get it. So when you actually create from data, it actually sends you back serialized data. It doesn't send you back the Django object itself which should make sense because you're working with this REST API. If you are on a client, that is if you're on an iOS device or something and you created a new new item using JSON data, you should expect to get JSON data back. So that's that. Um, so that's essentially how the serializers work. And of course you could play around with this a lot more, um, but it is useful to see it in action um, because the views, especially the generic views, actually handle a lot of that stuff for us. So we don't have to explicitly write it out but it is still something that's very useful to know. If you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.